Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's give them a praise for the Father. He woke you up this morning. He brought you on your way. Let's give them a praise for his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah, Father. So we say, open our hearts and our eyes, Father, that we may see you more, we may serve you more, and we may praise you more.
many of you want to see him? Amen. How many of you want to see him? I want to see him just to look upon his face. Amen. We want to say praise the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord to everybody. For this is the way that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we certainly do thank and praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For whom all of our blessings flow. And we certainly do want to welcome you to the Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Amen. Come on and give God a praise. Thank you. We certainly do honor to our beloved wife. We thank God for her. Thank God for her. We thank God for Mother Louise. We thank God for all of our union uh, team. And, uh, we thank God for our ushers. We thank God for all of our members. We thank God for all of you. Amen. Amen. We certainly praise God. Uh, we praise God for being who He is, being our strength, being our revival, being our, being our, our strong tower. Amen? Amen. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, if you have a particular prayer request, you can let it be known at this particular time. Thank you, Reverend Sister Priscilla. I forgot. I want to acknowledge our deacons as well and also Minister Grady. Amen. All right. Remember, Sister Priscilla, that the Lord will touch her body, give her healing, give her strength. Yes.
I have on my all read uh, verse 24 down to 27. Job chapter 2. And the word said, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmaro my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And we turn the rest of the service back over to the hands of the praise team.
bless your name today, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. And you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned.
that he'll rebuke the devourer. He'll pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. And, 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 and you don't rob God when you uh, give your tithes and offering. So it's a different blessing that's attached. And I want you to receive the full blessing. So uh, give your tithes and your offering. And then as you give, the Lord says you got to give it with the right attitude. He loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. Amen. So come and give and be happy. Be happy to give. And the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to what? Receive. Amen. Amen. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And the reason for that is, is because when you, when you give, God is able to turn around and bless you with more. He blesses you with more to give. We used to sing a song, when you give unto the Lord, he'll do what? Give you more to give. He will give you more to give. So let the church stand as we're preparing uh, for our giving. And it looks like we got one lone usher in the back. And she's going to lead y'all out in the proper way at the appointed time. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, and praise you for this opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom, for the building of your kingdom. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soldier, bless each and every giver, bless each and every stu steward, uh, bless them 30, 60, and 100 fold. And we ask you, Lord, to do this in your precious son's name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And those that uh, want to give electronically, we certainly do. We want to turn it over to our ushers as you're giving. We want to, to know that we have tithing, and you'll be, uh, you search out tithing, and then search out Christian ministries, and you'll be able to give in that way as well. The Lord is good. Oh, give thanks for He is good. Let's go again.
Lord of God in Georgia. Here you say the Lord is good. The Lord is good. I'm sure that he really enjoys rejoiced by hearing you say that the, he is good. He is good. So we certainly do praise God and give him thanks for all that he's doing and everything that he is toward us and to us. Uh, Y'all pray for me that the Lord will give me strength in my body and clarity of thought. Amen. We've been burning that midnight oil and you know, your body is shut down on him if you don't shut down on him. <laughs> So we certainly praise God for another day's journey. Amen. It's another day's journey. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. It's good to see all of your lovely faces. Amen. It's good to see all of your lovely faces. So I want to leave you with a word from the Lord. I want you to turn with me. If we can all stand just for a brief moment. Look like we may be out a little early on today. Y'all don't mind that, do you? Wow. 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 Okay, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Matthew chapter number four. Matthew chapter number four. Hallelujah. And as we were saying, we certainly do thank God for uh, the Night Payton States Council. Amen. And the, what we heard, uh, our subject was, wait, it's time to wake up out of sleep. And a uh, beautiful subject, a beautiful training and teaching upon that. And we thank God for that and for those that participated. And Matthew chapter number four. And I uh, want to focus your attention around verses uh, number uh, 12 through 17 with our main scripture coming out of verse 17. It says, Now when Jesus had heard that John the Baptist was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Read That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, or Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them that sat in the region and shadow of death, life sprung up. Light sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach against the dead. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is in your hand. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you for this opportunity to preach your anointed word, to stand behind this sacred desk at this sacred hour. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you ordain this time for us, that we may indulge in the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which will change our souls and change our course of life, that is able to give us faith and inheritance among them that are sanctified. We ask you, Lord, that you would grant the door by its clarity of thought and speech, sanctify the hearts and the minds of these great people, that they may receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of the soul. Answer any questions that we may have in our own hearts. In our own lives, Lord, you speak to us. Feed us in the name of Jesus. Feed us till our souls are satisfied. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And as I was praying, asking the Lord to feed us, uh, I should have said that also, Lord, water us. Amen. Water us and nurture us. Bring us up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. I want to take for a thought on this uh, still morning time uh, from that verse number 17. Uh, from that time, Jesus began to preach to say, 
Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's our subject on this morning. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And as we uh, looked at the verses, Matthew chapter 4, verse number 12, we see that Jesus, when he had heard, he had heard something about John the Baptist. John the Baptist, when he was cast into prison, Jesus did something immediately, as the scripture tells us. He departed into Galilee. Jesus himself grew up in Nazareth. He grew up in Nazareth. And this marks the beginning of his ministry, the beginning of his ministry. And the importance about this particular scripture that we have read in your hearing was that you know that John the Baptist was uh, the cousin of Jesus, born to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was, her husband had gotten a word from the Lord, Zacharias, that God would bless his wife. His prayers had been heard and that God would bless her with a child and they should call his name John and that uh, John the Baptist would be born with the Holy Ghost. And John's ministry was simply to identify Jesus, to identify the Christ. And as John and Jesus grew up John the Baptist was a great prophet in the land, baptizing people. And his very message was also, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he was baptizing people in the river Jordan. And y'all know the story, when the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to him to be baptized, he, he said they called them a generation of vipers who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come. And, and while he was getting on them, behold, Jesus comes on the scene. And y'all know the story that John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And Jesus presented himself to John, and John says, Hey, I'm not worthy to even unloose the, your shoe latches. Uh, but Jesus told him, if it, it, it behooves us to fulfill the calling of righteousness. So John baptized Jesus in that river Jordan and the Bible says something miraculous happened. The heavens opened and uh, a dove, the Holy Ghost descended in the form of a dove and it lightened upon him. And then immediately the Bible says that Jesus was driven by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness uh, to be tempted of the devil. There he fasted 40 days and he fasted 40 nights until uh, the Bible says afterward he was in hunger. Afterwards he was a hunger. Jesus was so caught up with the mission, so caught up with fasting and praying, so caught up with overcoming the lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eye and the pride of life so that he can clarify his uh, his mission so that he can clarify what God has for him. And I can just only imagine what they were fast, what he was fasting and praying and oh for that long of a period and all that he had saw. But the Bible says that he was so caught up and appetite didn't even enter in and he was afterward a hunger. And then here comes old the devil uh, to come and take advantage of Jesus, take it advantage of his hungry state and told him, saying that if thou be the son of man, and cast these, uh, cause these stones to be made bread. And yeah. Jesus told him that man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yeah. And then the devil took him up into a high pinnacle of a mountain and told him uh, to jump down from his pinnacle. Least he the angels will bear thee up, least thee dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus told him, because he said, it is written, 
You know, when you fighting up against the devil, you, it's better for you not to go on your own opinion, but to go with what is written. Jesus said, it is written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then the devil, the devil took him uh, up to a, another high mountain and showed him everything that he had control of and everything that he had uh, power over and told Jesus that I will give you this world if you just bow down and worship me. If you just bow down and worship me in Jesus turned around and told him that, that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And it's, it's good to know that that's the only one that we should worship. That's the only one that we should give glory and honor to. That's written in the Ten Commandments, that thou shalt not have any other God before me, that thou shalt not make any graven images, that, that thou shalt keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Oh my God, it's, it's good to serve the true and living God. It's, it's good to serve Him that is the lover of our soul. And, and the Bible says that Jesus quoted the word because He Himself is the word made flesh. And, and He talked among us. And the, the Bible says that we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. My God, when you get next to Jesus and you get that bird in you, you're going to have some grace. You're going to have some truth in you. You're going to be able to be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. You're going to be able to stand when you put on that whole armor of God. When you, when you seek the Lord with all your heart, when you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. You know, the devil came and tempted Jesus and, and found nothing in him because he fasted and he prayed and he's holy in the echo shot. Hallelujah, he's untouchable. Hallelujah, why? Because he understood the, the power of prayer. He understood the power of the word. Brothers and sisters, we've got to understand the power of prayer. Understand the power of the word of God. Though the enemy may come and tempt us, though the enemy may present everything that he has, hallelujah, but we don't have to get into it. We don't have to turn our lives over to the enemy. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, somebody said, but the Lord. Ah, but the Lord, he delivered us out of the law. I, I thank God that when the Bible says that when we enter into God's temptation, count, count it all joy. You can count it all joy when you enter into God's temptations. And, and the Bible tells you when the enemy comes up against you to resist the devil. Uh, tell your neighbor, I've got to resist the devil. I gotta resist the devil steadfast and he shall flee. Oh my God. And then Jesus, after uh, he was tempted in that wilderness experience, uh, sometimes we're gonna have a wilderness experience. Sometimes we're gonna be tempted. Sometimes it's gonna feel like our temptation uh, is without measure. It, it, it comes upon us. But we've got to realize we got hope in God. We, we gotta realize that we got a hope that, that we don't have to give in to our flesh. That we don't have to give in to lustful desires. That we don't have to give in to things that, my God, I feel like preaching up in here. We don't have to give in to the vials of the devil. The Bible says for us to withstand and, and have it done all to stand. Put on that whole armor of God uh, that you might be able to stand uh, against the vials of the devil. And I thank God that Jesus, he left us an example. He, he left us an example that we should follow in his steps. And, and in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, my God, he realized that uh, John the Baptist, uh, he was thrown into prison. And he was thrown into prison because John was living a righteous life. Uh, John was upholding the bloodstained banner. And the King Herod didn't like John because John rebuked him for his evil and unwicked deeds. 
things and told him that you can have your brother's wife. And the brother's wife got all upset, hallelujah, and had him beheaded. And then he got him beheaded for that wicked and evil deeds. My God, Jesus preached this eulogy. And Jesus said, there's been no other like John the Baptist. John, John the Baptist is one of the greatest men that ever walked the face of this earth. He, he gave John his props and told him, said, John is a good man. Hallelujah, there's no other like John in the kingdom of heaven except for those that would lend themselves to be servants of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, John, Jesus was saying that John is a tough man. John is a soldier. John is a soldier in the army of God. But, 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 but unlike all of those that could give them lives for the kingdom, hallelujah, John, those that could give them lives to the kingdom, they don't have nothing. Hallelujah over John. Because we've got to give our lives to the Lord. And if we put your trust in Jesus, hallelujah, you're great in the kingdom of God. And hallelujah, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is suffered violence. And oh, from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. My God, you got to realize what you got. The enemy is not going to allow you to go on a pair of bees into the land of glory. But you got to take what God has given unto you. You got to take it. Hallelujah, what God has blessed you here. That, that's just like how the children of Israel were given the promised land, but they had to go over to the promised land and take it. Hallelujah, you got to take all the promises uh, that God has given to you. Don't allow the devil to steal your joy. Don't allow the devil to steal your peace. Don't allow the devil to steal your inheritance. You gotta take it. Although it's given up to you by faith. Although the, although the path has already been made. Although Jesus Christ died on the cross and he gave it unto you. You gotta take it. My God, you gotta take it. Why? Because you which is the devil. And he's going about trying to find who he can devour. But you got to take back your joy. You got to take back your power. Don't be a trump. Don't lay down for the devil. Stand up and declare whose generation you are. Declare whose you are. Oh my God. You got to realize that God has given you power. The Bible says that he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh my God, I tell my, my little grandchildren, I like to see them talk, and I tell them, use your words. Use your words, because your words are power. You gotta use your words. You gotta use your words, because your words are power. You can
Jesus stayed focused. If you check out all his teaching, it's about repentance and the kingdom of heaven. Get ready. Because it's at hand. John the Baptist, when he said it was at hand, he was saying that it was coming. When Jesus said it's at hand, he's saying that it is here. He's saying that I am. I represent the kingdom of heaven. He is the kingdom of heaven. Ah, uh, he said the kingdom of heaven shall be in you. That it cometh not without observation, but it shall be in you. And when you adhere to the teachings of Jesus,
Y'all catch that when y'all go home. Notice what he said. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. And you can use those weapons to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bring every and bring into captivity every thought to obedience to the obedience of Christ. That's repentance. Repenting. For the kingdom is at hand. When you repent and turn to God, you repent and turn to all his mighty weapons that is able to bring down every stronghold that may occur in your life. That's why the Bible says, whom the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. Now notice, God, having in readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience, when you're turning back to Him, is fulfilled. When you're turning back to Him, is fulfilled. We, like all sheep, have gone astray. Everyone has lost their own way. But God is calling all of us to return. God is calling all of us to come home. Be like the prodigal son. Come home. Hallelujah. Trust in your God. And when you come home, he'll slay this fatted calf. He'll put the big ring on your finger. He'll put the robe around you. Uh, he'll kiss you on your neck and say, my son, my daughter has come home. Come on and give God a praise. That's because our Lord, because the kingdom is at hand. Jesus has done great and mighty things for us. Let the church stand. What do you want the Lord to say? Jesus name.